This tomb of the unknown soldier guard got stabbed. In his reaction, got everyone talking. The day started with an announcement from an officer. The ceremony of the changing of the guard will now commence. Please remain silent and stand during the ceremony. Out of respect for the fallen soldiers, we honor here today. As soon as the crowd of tourists and onlookers gathered at Arlington National Cemetery heard it, they became quiet. It meant the changing of the guard ceremony was about to take place. The ceremony is a carefully executed ritual that honors America's fallen heroes in a way that symbolizes the continuous commitment of the United States to respect its soldiers whose names were lost to war. This ceremony is usually done so carefully and precisely that nothing goes wrong. But on this day, something would go terribly wrong. As the calm autumn breeze ruffled the American flags at the site, the crowd stretched their necks to get a good look at the soldier guard standing at the tomb of the unknown soldier. The soldier guards are called sentinels because their duties are far more solemn than those of regular military guards. The sentinel that was about to be relieved from duty was a young soldier named Martin. His pose was up to par, and his uniform was immaculate. Every button was polished to a shine, and every crease was razor sharp. Even the littlest details mattered to the sentinels, because this wasn't just a duty, but an honor to the unknown heroes they guarded. Once the signal was given, the relief commander appeared on the plaza of the Memorial Amphitheater. Relief Commander Alex was a seasoned officer and one of the most experienced relief commanders among the tomb sentinels. Beside him was the sentinel that was to replace Martin. As they marched from the plaza to the tomb of the unknown soldier, their every step was measured and precise. The tomb of the unknown soldier at Arlington National Cemetery in Arlington, Virginia, is a monument dedicated to deceased U.S. service members whose remains have not been identified. The tomb represents all missing and unknown service members who have died in service to their country. One of the most solemn and respected aspects of the tomb of the unknown soldier is the changing of the guard ceremony. The change ceremony began this way. Alex, the relief commander, appeared with the sentinel who was to replace the one on guard. First, relief commander Alex conducted a detailed inspection of the new sentinel's rifle and uniform. With practiced movements, the relief commander examined the new guard's rifle. His gloved hands ran down the barrel as he checked every detail. These inspections were to be precise and conducted with deliberate ceremonial movements. After they were done, the outgoing sentinel would then pass on the duties to the incoming sentinel with an exact set of movements and commands. This includes a ritualistic passing of the weapon, which signifies the transfer of responsibility. The new guard would finally take up position next to the tomb and begin pacing the mat. Everything, from the changing ceremony down to the walk, had to follow a precise format. The walk is exactly 21 steps, referring to the 21-gun salute, the highest honor given to a military or foreign dignitary. After 21 steps, the sentinel would turn and face the tomb for 21 seconds before turning again and walking 21 steps back. By then, the relief commander and the outgoing sentinel would have returned inside the quarters while the new sentinel continued the watch. This was how it was meant to go, but something very different played out today. Martin stood in attention as Commander Alex turned his attention to him. The relief commander's gaze lingered for a moment on the young soldier's stoic expression. Tourists held their breath as they watched with their cameras trained on the somber exchange. Alex began the inspection of Martin's rifle with slow and deliberate movements. Martin felt Alex's hand brush the polished barrel of the rifle, then move down to the gleaming stock. Just then, something unexpected happened. Someone shouted in the crowd. It was a little girl, and her voice ripped through the solemn silence like a gunshot. In that split second, Alex's grip seemed to loosen. The rifle he was examining tilted at an unnatural angle before slipping from his hand. Before Martin could react, the rifle had fallen straight down. But the worst was yet to come. Martin felt a sharp, hot pain erupt from his right foot. It felt like someone had plunged a white-hot poker straight through his boot. This was because the ceremonial rifle's bayonet was out, and as the rifle fell, it had gone right through his leg, piercing it. Martin's breath hitched and his vision blurred. 
He wanted to scream, jump back, and then hold his foot, but as a sentinel, he couldn't do any of this. Blood welled up, staining his boots polished leather crimson. Martin knew being a sentinel meant bearing pain, but he did not know something like this was ever going to happen. And even worse, this pain reminded him of a deeper ache that was buried deep in his heart. Martin was a young soldier with a strong sense of duty, and while he had been a tomb sentinel for over a year, he had not always been this brave. The pain made him remember when he was six years old again. Then, he was just a scared little kid with a mop of unruly brown hair. In that day, he was crying as his father knelt before him. They were in the living room, and his father was dressed in his sharp military uniform. Back then, Martin's world revolved around two things, the love of his parents and the providing presence of his father. Every evening, father and son would wrestle on the living room rug, with his father letting out mock cries of defeat as Martin pinned him down. Every bedtime story ended with a kiss on the forehead and a whispered promise that he would always be there. Then came the day that the world seemed to stop for little Martin. Martin's dad, who was a reservist, was called to serve in the war. The goodbye stuck in Martin's memory like a painful tattoo. His father knelt before him and told him not to cry. He cupped little Martin's face in his large hands, wiping away the tears with his thumbs. Martin could feel his father's trembling fingers as he explained that he had to go away for a while. He promised he'd be back before he knew it and they'd go fishing again, just like they always did. All he needed Martin to do was take care of his mom. Martin's dad's departure was a blur of tearful goodbyes and forced smiles. At the airport, Martin cried so hard as his dad kissed his forehead. He wiped his tears and promised to be back. As his dad headed towards his flight, he kept looking back and waving at him. After his father's departure, the house felt empty without his booming laugh in the comforting scent of his aftershave. Martin, six, clung to his mother, who was also worried. He received letters from his father every three days, as promised. Each one was filled with love and promises of their reunion. But then, the letters stopped coming. As the days turned into weeks and weeks into months, Martin's mother grew increasingly pale and withdrawn. She was fearful that something bad had happened. So, Martin tried to be strong for his mom, and he even put on a brave face. He repeated his father's promise like a mantra, telling his mom that dad would be back soon. Yet, his voice was laced with a confidence he didn't quite feel. When their dad's birthday came, they celebrated it with joy and tears. As they blew out the candles on the cake, a knock on the door shattered the fragile hope they had. Martin's mother went to answer it with her heart pounding in her chest. As she opened the door, she saw two figures standing on the doorstep. One was a military officer in a crisp uniform, while the other was a chaplain with a gentle face. They were a sight Martin had only seen in movies, and he knew what they meant. Bad news disguised in official attire. His heart hammered against his ribs as he watched his mother crumple to the floor. The officer spoke in a formal voice. He informed them of a bombing, which caused the deaths of some soldiers. After rigorous research, it was concluded that Martin's dad may have been part of the blast. The officer added that his father was one of those missing, presumed to be a victim of the blast. His father and these soldiers were labeled as missing in action because their bodies were unidentifiable. Martin's mother cried a deep, gut-wrenching sob that echoed through the house. But Martin refused to believe it. He clung to his father's promise. His dad had promised he'd come back, and his father never broke his promises. Days turned into weeks, then months, then years. Martin's hope slowly dwindled, yet he wouldn't let it go out entirely. He held on to the memory of his father's promise, and he kept hoping and waiting. But 15 years passed. That's when Martin realized his dad was never coming back. But instead of grief, a spark ignited within him. Martin decided that he would serve his country just like his father. He would stand guard, not just for the borders, but for the fallen heroes whose identities were lost. He would become a tomb sentinel, 
honoring his father and countless others who died fighting for their beloved country. Now, as the searing pain in his foot threatened to consume him, the memory of his father washed over him. The pain was a physical manifestation of the grief he'd carried for years, a raw reminder of his life lost. But a different kind of strength welled up within him. He wouldn't let the pain win. He wouldn't let his father down. He wouldn't let down the countless others he stood guard for. Not here. Not now. The ceremony had to go on. He would stand by his post no matter the cost. Martin strengthened his posture and met Alex's stunned gaze with a resolute expression. The ceremony had to go on. Martin understood the concept of the unknown soldier all too well. It's a powerful symbol of sacrifice and loss during war. After World War I, many soldiers were left unidentified. Countries wanted a way to honor these individuals who gave their lives but had no known grave. The idea was to select an unidentified soldier and give them a ceremonial burial as a representative for all unknown soldiers. The idea came to life on November 11, 1920, when both France and Britain buried an unidentified soldier in a place of honor. In France, the unknown soldier was laid to rest under the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. In Britain, the soldier was buried in Westminster Abbey, London. This date, November 11th, became known as Armistice Day, now Remembrance Day or Veterans Day, marking the end of World War I. On November 11th, 1921, the United States chose an unidentified American soldier from World War I and buried him at Arlington National Cemetery in imitation of France and Britain. This site, known as the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, has become a significant place of respect and mourning in the U.S. Over time, the concept expanded to include unknown soldiers from subsequent conflicts. For example, the United States later added unknowns from World War II, the Korean War, and initially the Vietnam War, before the Vietnam War unknowns were later identified and removed. Many other countries around the world have established their own memorials to the unknown soldier, each serving as a poignant reminder of the cost of war and the sacrifices of the military. These memorials are often placed in prominent national locations and are central to military and remembrance ceremonies. The resolve Martin displayed shook the relief commander. Alex had watched in horror as the rifle tumbled down and pierced Martin's boot. Shame washed over Alex like a tidal wave. He saw as the young soldier flinched for a split second before going back to his composed form. In truth, Alex felt even more pain than Martin did. It wasn't just about the dropped rifle or even the injury he'd caused. The truth was that all was not well with Alex that day. His daughter was in a coma. She had an accident on a school trip and she was the only one in a coma. She was riding in the front seat when an out of control truck drove head on into the bus. Heroically, the bus driver veered to the side of the road, causing it to crash and simultaneously intensifying the impact that ultimately led to his death. While some children sustained minor wounds, Alex's daughter was unconscious and dependent on life support. Alex was given time to properly grieve after hearing the news. However, Alex insisted on returning to guard the tomb, and after weeks of persisting, he was allowed to resume. But Alex was still worried. The reason he even returned to work in the first place was because work was the only way he could relax his mind. Back on duty, he felt better because of the discipline of his work. Being the relief commander, Alex was to relieve Martin, the sentinel on guard, while a new sentinel came in. He marched to relieve him as the crowd of onlookers watched, but Alex wasn't in a good emotional state. As he got to Martin, a girl screamed, and it sounded so much like his daughter's voice. Suddenly, the fear of losing his daughter rushed back. Would she wake up? If she did, would she ever walk again? Alex tried to brush off these thoughts, but the thoughts distracted him, causing the rifle to slip and fall. Alex was horrified, but to his surprise, Martin remained very calm and composed. Despite the excruciating pain, Martin maintained his composure and professionalism. He finished the changing of the guard ceremony alongside the relief commander. Only a sign of pain on the sentinel's face and blood seeping from his boot showed how severe the injury was. 
It happened so fast that an ordinary eye would have missed it, but a tourist captured the incident on video. The video went viral, highlighting Martin's dedication and the stoicism of the tomb's sentinels. It wasn't the dropped rifle that captivated the internet, but the soldier guard's unwavering dedication after getting stabbed in the foot. The fact that the young soldier's face barely indicated pain astounded millions of people. His reaction got everyone talking. The video became a sensation, sparking a firestorm of online praise. It wasn't just Martin's bravery that people admired, but the entire mystique and dedication of the tomb's sentinels. News outlets swarmed Arlington National Cemetery, clamoring for interviews with Martin and officials. Meanwhile, medics rushed Martin to the base hospital. The initial x-rays revealed a more concerning picture than imagined. The bayonet wound might have lodged deep enough to cause an infection and potentially damage nerves. This could jeopardize his entire career as a sentinel, a devastating prospect for Martin. Days turned into weeks and the reporters camped outside Arlington. But all this while, Martin grappled with the possibility of a medical discharge. His dream of guarding the tomb was fading with each passing day. General Thompson, however, closely monitored the situation. He recognized in Martin not just courage, but an unwavering dedication to duty. Despite the injury, Martin was awarded the coveted Tomb Sentinel Badge, a testament to his commitment and the resilience he'd shown throughout the ordeal. Martin's recovery was long and arduous. He battled the constant pain and the looming threat of permanent nerve damage. Physical therapy sessions became a daily battleground, a grueling test of his physical and mental fortitude. Each step forward was a victory, a defiance against the possibility of giving up his dream. And Martin wouldn't give up. The memory of his father and the promise etched in his heart fueled his determination. He pushed himself beyond his perceived limitations, defying even the therapist's expectations. Slowly and painstakingly, he regained full functionality in his foot. The news was met with cheers from everyone who had witnessed his unwavering dedication. He was offered the chance to continue serving as a tomb sentinel because of his exceptional spirit and his commitment to the sacred duty. The once shy soldier returned to his post as a hero. He was showered with praise and recognition by high-ranking military officials and commended for upholding the honor of the tomb sentinels. Martin, being humble, deflected the praise. He spoke not of his own actions, but of the importance of honoring the fallen soldiers, the unknown heroes whose sacrifices the tomb represented. His quiet dignity only added to the growing admiration. Relief Commander Alex, too, felt happy at the end. His daughter Lily had woken up from her coma. Tears welled in his eyes as he heard the news. His Lily was weak and her voice was a mere whisper of its former self. But she was awake and squeezing his hand. The doctors spoke of a long road to recovery. But for Alex, it was a path he'd gladly walk. He spent every waking moment by her bedside and the weight that had burdened him for weeks slowly lifted. As he recounted the story of the dropped rifle and the brave soldier, Martin, Lily's eyes widened. Dad, she whispered. That was on the news. You were there? Alex could only smile. In that moment, the fear and worry that had consumed him for so long faded away, replaced by a simple joy. He wasn't just a soldier, he was a father, and his daughter was home. He had almost lost her, and now he had a second chance. He knew his duty at the tomb was important, but nothing was more important than his daughter. Alex was ready to put it behind him, and he was not worried because there were brave soldiers to carry on, like Martin. The viral video became a staple in training programs as a wonderful reminder of staying calm under pressure and the unflinching devotion required to stand guard for people who couldn't speak for themselves. Martin's heroism and persistent dedication inspired a new generation of troops. He was no longer merely a soldier, but a symbol of loyal duty. The little kid who stood vigil in his heart for his missing father had grown into a man who stood guard for a country on the sacred grounds of Arlington National Cemetery.